All right, the next things we're going to need to accomplish the finishing testing and bleeding of the brakes is you want something to bleed the uh, parking brake SAR um, as well as the service brakes. So if you've got a bleeder tube and a bottle, that'll work great. And then you'll also need your pink, uh, your ATF Dex Merc, uh, ATF fluid. And then we'll also need uh, brake fluid. Uh, we use DOT3 here, you might use DOT3, DOT4, but the first thing you're going to want to do is fill your service brake uh, reservoir, your master cylinder, with your uh, brake fluid. Fill it to the max, because you might already lost some when you were undoing lines earlier. Alright, the first thing you're going to want to do is come in the cab and pull this hose out here. You might need a funnel and you're going to want to fill your ATF fluid up to the second dimple uh, dot here on this reservoir. So fill it until Alright, so now that we've got it to our second dimple here, level with our second dimple, you can go ahead and just set the cap up there because we're going to need to re-top this off after we bleed the parking brake SAR cavity. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is go under the hood and make sure that your circuit breaker is in the on position. I know I told you to turn it on before, but just verify that. And then we'll go on to testing our pump pack. Alright, next thing you're going to want to do is get in the cab and shut both doors, or all four doors, however many doors you got, shut them because our door switch wire is hooked up and you won't be able to power anything up if it's tripping the uh, door switch. So, uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is take your key and turn it to the on position. You don't need to turn the engine on, just turn your key to the on position like you're going to listen to the radio or whatnot. Um, then you should have a solid red light on your your dash panel here. Um, you're going to want to push the button in, make sure that's pushed in all the way, and then hit your tow mode button. What you should have is a green flashing light. That means that your tow mode button is doing its job, everything's working fine, and that way you can release the brakes without there being engine power. And we'll try that now. It takes a few seconds, but the pump pressurizes. Once it hits its pressure, it'll shut off. Now, if the pump was to turn back on right now, that means that we've got a loose connection in the back and you're probably leaking ATF fluid somewhere. Um, the fact that it's stopped now and it's not running, that means that it's pressurized, your brakes are released, and you'd be able to tow the vehicle out as need be. Um, that's the point of tow mode. This is not how you're normally gonna going to run your vehicle. You're not going to be running it in tow mode. This is just to get a vehicle out of the mine without, you know, dragging it out with the brakes locked up. All right, so now that you've got your brakes released uh, via your, your panel here, um, we're going to test to make sure our door switches are working properly. Um, so all you got to do is open your door and this will alarm and it'll dump the pressure if your door switches are working properly. So here we go. So what it's just done is automatically set the parking brake and now you can just push your red button and go ahead and get out of the vehicle. Alright, so now make sure that your windows are open in your vehicle um, because your door switch is being activated. You can't start this with the doors open so what we're going to do now is just reach in and start this like we just did by pushing the tow mode button and turning so that we can go back and bleed our SAR part of the brakes. Alright, so we're on the right the uh, right side of the vehicle, the rear. Um, this is your SAR port, so what we're going to do is put our 716th wrench on here and hook our bleeder bottle up and Obviously, it's going to be pressurized, so you just want to release it until the fluid starts to come out. Otherwise, you could cause an error for your pump pack. So, slowly open it. And 
until you don't see any air bubbles coming through, okay? And then you're going to want to go to the other side and do the same thing. Alright, so after bleeding this, you're going to want to go back into your cab and check your reservoir level on your pump pack. Make sure your ATF fluid is up to that second dot again um, just before going in and bleeding the other side. Alright, so after bleeding both of the SARS on the left side and right side of the vehicle, uh, you're going to want to come back in the truck and if you've got your door switches operational, when you open the door it's going to dump the pressure. So you can go ahead and do that. And if your door switches are not operational, just push the button. So just make sure you push the button either way. And what that does is that cycles the pressure back up to here and it rises up a little bit. Now you can fill your reservoir back up to the second dimple and leave it there and put your cover back on and put your four bolts in. Alright, the next thing we're going to check is that our oil pressure switch is working properly. Uh, we did run our yellow wire to the engine oil pressure switch. So what you're going to do now is push down on that, make sure it's down and try to start it with the key in the ignition in the on position, the engine not running, okay? So with the engine not running, you're gonna wanna go like this, and the pump pack should not run, as it did there, it didn't run. That's because it's not sensing oil pressure from the engine. So, you try it again, it alarms out. And it'll, it'll show an error code here by how many blinks. See, it's blinking one time, that means the oil pressure switch uh, was tripped. So, all right. So, last check here. We're going to test our uh, our system here, working with engine power. So, we're going to start the engine here. And now we've got engine power. So, all you should have to do is just turn your button, and it should start right up. And we got a green light, solid, so we're good to go. Alright, so now we're going to bleed our service brakes. So you need to first make sure that both of your brakes have this bleeder valve uh, shut. Or else when you go start pumping the brakes, the other side's going to leak and you're not going to know what's going on. You're going to have tons of air. All right, so first thing you're going to want to do is uh, fire the truck up. And then you're going to want to release your brakes by turning your red button in the cab. Then you can come over to your service brake side here. And uh, we're starting at the left uh, side rear brake because that's furthest from our master cylinder. You're going to want to start furthest from your master cylinder when you're bleeding. Um, so, get a driver, tell him, go ahead and pump it. <coughs> You're going to want to do this as many times as it takes till you stop seeing air coming through. It's going to be quite a few times just to let you in on a secret. Pump! Pop. 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 one more time. So after doing this brake, uh, bleeding out, then you're going to want to go around to your other brake, your other LC brake on the other side of the vehicle, and then you're going to want to go to your uh, front brakes, um, starting on the same side as this one. 
So it would be the brake behind, behind this wheel. Then you're going to end up on the closest side to your master cylinder uh, and bleed those. Then after that you're going to want to go back and do the same brake, the LC brake that you started with and verify that you got all the air out by bleeding that one again a couple times. So once you're confident that all four of your brakes are bled properly and your pedal feels pretty firm, uh, come back to your brake fluid reservoir and be sure and top it off until it gets to the max line. Like so.